Earlier this week, we focused in on Pennsylvania with its 20 electoral college seats, 16 for the electoral college in the state of Georgia. There's Donald Trump, been to the state on a number of occasions, holding a rally. Here is Joe Biden. He hasn't traveled much outside his home state, doing a lot of things virtually, but he made a visit to Georgia in a very important speech where he railed against what he said, the charlatans, the con man, the phony populists campaigning there in Georgia. Why are both of them in Georgia? Why is this state so important? We want to give you a bit of a primer ahead of Tuesday with Maya King, who is a politics reporter with Politico, has written some very, very interesting and very informative pieces on Georgia. She's in Washington this morning. Maya, welcome to our program. Thanks for having me. Really delighted to focus on Georgia with you. All right, let us just remind people, I'll give them a, a history lesson, first of all, uh, about how Georgia has been reliably red. His voted Republican, Bill Clinton, in 1992, was the last Democrat to win Georgia, reliably red throughout. But this time, you have both candidates making a serious play. Now, why? Is it really close? It is, and I can tell you why. I mean, the main reason really why Democrats and Republicans now have really tried to make a play with Democrats closing in on the state and Republicans really playing defense is because voter turnout is at an all-time high. Um, there are, of course, Trump defectors and folks who have decided now to, um, to leave Trump's base and decide to vote for Joe Biden. But you've also got nearly one million new voters in the state who are largely people of color and young people. And those are groups that tend to vote Democratic as well, which is putting the state very much in play. So that's so interesting. I'm going to bring in some pictures for our viewers here, Maya, because when Georgia opened its early voting, we were reporting here about these incredible long lines and waits of up to 11 hours. It was just extraordinary as we look again at these pictures. So this is exactly what you're talking to. And you're saying it's, it's new voters in those lines. You can see a lot of voters of color, obviously. Who else are you seeing turning out so far? You also see a lot of older voters, older black voters. Black women, of course, in Georgia and across the United States have been some of the most active members of Democrats' base. Um, in Georgia and in the Georgia suburbs specifically, there are a lot of diverse and rapidly changing demographics. So lots of people of Latin American descent, lots of um, Asian Americans in line as well. And, of course, you also have um, members of Trump's base. There are Republicans who are voting early who share the same concerns about mail-in voting and want to make sure that their vote is counted and counted on time. Uh, that's really important to, to, to let people know. I mean, he won the state by five points four years ago, and uh, Donald Trump still does have a base of support there. And the expectation is, not just in Georgia, but anywhere, that it will be more Republicans or turnout on, on Election Day itself. Where is his support based, Maya? Well, Trump's support is now really based in the rural, more rural Georgia counties. And so um, you're looking at places like Macon, uh, where Trump was in Georgia, uh, two weeks ago, just making sure that he was shoring up his base. And in certain pockets of the Atlanta metropolitan area, there are neighborhoods where Trump does have a pretty strong hold on his support. I spoke with a handful of Republican state legislators who told me, you know, it does kind of look like Georgia might be turning purple or maybe blue, but they still believe, talking to their constituents in those areas, that Georgia will still remain reliably red after November 3rd. That is so interesting. One of the phrases that I uh, picked up from somebody talking about Georgia, not, not blue or red or indeed even purple, but purpling in the process of a transition. So becoming purple, given the changing demographics that you have just uh, laid out for us. If we can go back to those pictures of people in line, I mean, you mentioned the concerns that people have about mail-in ballots. One thing I think we need to understand about Georgia is is the context of 2018 and what happened in that year that really perhaps may be a part of the reason why people are out there in such strength early. Can you just give us some of that context and that history, Maya? Sure. Well, what we saw in 2018 were a handful of things. One, and perhaps the most important, was the removal of voters from the voter rolls. More than 100,000 Georgians were removed from the voter rolls 
um, because perhaps their names did not match, they had changed their address, or you know, a few actually had passed away. But there were a larger number of active voters who actually got to the polls and had to fill out provisional ballots, which were not counted until later because of uh, their removal from the voter rolls inaccurately. Also, we saw Georgia uses a digital voting machine system. Uh, Georgia voters do not vote uh, with a paper ballot. And so a lot of those digital machines actually malfunctioned, which made it, of course, more difficult, if not impossible, um, for folks to actually cast their ballot on time. And finally, of course, as we've mentioned and talked about, the long lines at the polls. And that was the biggest issue because folks who didn't have two, three, or even six or eight hours to cast a ballot really were struggling and had to turn away and did not vote. And that in itself is a textbook definition of voter suppression. And so um, voters were thinking about this and looking back and saw the slim margin by which Stacey Abrams, who was the Democratic candidate for governor, lost to Brian Kemp, who was the Republican and also the state secretary of state who was overseeing the election. And they took stock um, of that moment and said, you know what, in 2020, this is absolutely not what I'm going to stand for. And they made the time to wait in long lines. They have the phone numbers of all of their election officials to call when they see discrepancies or any issues. And they're also volunteering at the polls themselves to make sure that they have a role, um, not just in casting a ballot, but in really making sure that, uh, that their fellow Georgians are casting a ballot safely and that this system is as credible as possible. So they don't want to repeat here in 2020. What about so far? Have there been problems at the ballot box? The first week of early voting um, was a bit shaky and did remind a lot of people of what they were seeing in 2018. A few of the machines did malfunction in some counties in Atlanta, in the Atlanta area. And the lines were long um, during the first week of early voting due to volume and enthusiasm and, you know, a level of, um, of preparedness that volunteers were still trying to understand and make sure that they were getting everything right. Uh, while I was in Georgia during the second week of early voting, things had slowed down a bit. The lines were still long, but they were moving quickly. And voters did not have to wait longer than 30 minutes to an hour to cast a ballot, um, which is still, you know, not necessarily a good thing, but pales in comparison to the 6 to 12 hours that we saw in June. Indeed. Um, and, yeah. and hopefully bodes well for what will come on Tuesday. So here we are heading into voting day. The 16 electoral college votes that I was mentioning for Georgia earlier, important to all or both of the candidates on their way to 270. And as we leave you today, my, I mean, we've talked about how it was reliably red, now maybe purpling, and the polls indicate at this point who is leading in Georgia. Well, we know that Joe Biden is ahead in Georgia um, by about five points, according to a poll that was released out of the state yesterday. And so Democrats are confident that if their voters turn out, if young people, people of color, and, the, um, and their moderates also in the state, and even the Trump defectors, if everyone is able to cast a vote safely and on time, they're very confident that Joe Biden will not only turn Georgia blue, but take the Senate and even the State House with him. Not the down ballot candidates as well. A very interesting state to watch. Again, it was Trump who won Georgia by five points over Clinton four years ago. Maya, thank you very much. Really appreciate meeting you and uh, hearing the information. Maya's piece is on the uh, politico.com if you want to read anything further about Georgia. Maya King from Washington. And again, thanks very much.